My name is Sam Buckney. I'm the author of Malignant Self-Love, Narcissism Revisited. Thinkers and scholars as diverse as Christopher Lash in The Cultural Narcissist and Theodore Millen in Personality Disorders of Everyday Life have singled out the United States as the quintessential narcissistic society. The American dream in itself is pretty benign. It involves materialistic self-realization, the belief in the ideal of equal opportunities and equal access to the system, and the belief in just rewards for hard work, merit, and natural gifts. The American dream has both Protestant and Jewish roots, but it had been rendered nightmarish by the confluence with America's narcissistic traits. America has an internal ethos and an external ethos. America's internal ethos is universally accepted by all Americans. It incorporates the American dream and the conviction that America stands for everything that is good and right, American exceptionalism. Consequently, as the reification of goodness with a manifest destiny, the United States is in constant battle with evil and its ever-changing demonic emissaries, from Hitler to Saddam Hussein. While there is a consensus about America's internal ethos, there is no agreement on its external ethos. Some Americans are isolationists, others interventionists. Both groups, isolationists and interventionists, are hypervigilant, paranoid and self-righteous. The isolationists are also introverted and schizoid. The isolationists maintain a siege mentality. The interventionists are missionary. They feel omnipotent and invincible. They are extroverted and psychopathic. This pathology in the American psyche can be traced back and attributed to a confluence of historical events and processes. The equivalence of trauma and abuse in an, in, in an individual's early childhood. The United States of America started out as a series of loosely connected, remote, savage and negligible colonial outposts. The denizens of these settlements were former victims of religious persecution, indentured servants, lapsed nobility and other riffraff and refugees. Their declaration of independence reads like a maudlin list of grievances coupled with desperate protestations of love and loyalty to their abuser, the King of Britain. The inhabitants of the colonies defended psychologically against their perceived helplessness and very real inferiority. They defended by developing compensatory, imagined and feigned superiority and fantasies of omnipotence. Victims frequently internalize their abusers. They themselves become abusers and bullies. Hence the rough, immutable kernel of American narcissism. Americans are victims turned thugs. The United States was, until the civil rights movement of the 1960s, and still to a large extent is, Obama notwithstanding, in some important respects a pre-enlightenment, white supremacist society. America is rife with superstition, prejudice, conspicuous religiosity, intolerance, philistinism, and lack of social solidarity. American religiosity is overt, aggressive, virulent, and ubiquitous. It is replete with an eschatology which involves a changing cast of demonized enemies, both political and cultural. In fact, America's ascendance over the British Empire owes a lot to the fact that America's social reforms lagged one century behind Britain's. This license to profiteer and exploit its slaves and laborers gave the United States a competitive edge, a one-century large competitive edge, that it has yet to amortize. The Civil War was fought between two Americas. The South was a perverted rendition of Europe in the 16th and 17th centuries. The North was a harbinger of modern, multicultural immigrant societies. The North and the American dream prevailed. Slaves were freed, the southern way of life, that of gentlemen with leisure, was replaced by a workaholic society where everyone is slave to money, and leisure is an ever rarer commodity. Back to American, American's religion or religiosity. It's an important facet of American existence. American's religion is a manifestation 
their chosen people syndrome. Americans are missionary, messianic, zealous, fanatical, and nauseatingly self-righteous, bigoted, and hypocritical. This is especially discernible in the double speak and double standard that underlies American foreign policy. American altruism is misanthropic, compulsive. Americans often give merely in order to control, to manipulate, to sadistically humiliate the recipients. Narcissism is frequently comorbid with paranoia. Americans cultivate and nurture a siege mentality which leads to violent acting out and unbridled jingoism. Americans' persecutory delusions sit well with their adherence to social Darwinism. Natural selection of the fittest, let the weaker fall by the wayside, might is right, all these encourage real paranoia. Consequently, the United States always finds itself in company with the least palatable regimes in the world. In bed with Nazi Germany, it had a working eugenics program. The 1935 anti-Jewish Nuremberg laws and the Nazi sterilization law were both modeled after American anti-miscegenation and sterilization statutes. America finds itself together with the likes of Saudi Arabia when it executes its prisoners. America was the last developed nation to abolish slavery along with South Africa. And like South Africa, it had instituted in the past an official apartheid, a kind of uh, a widespread policy to discriminate against its black citizens in a vast swath of its territory. Add to this volatile mix an ethos of malignant individualism, racism, both latent and overt, trampling, no holds barred, viciousness, competitiveness, frontier violence-based morality, and proud simple-mindedness, anti-elitism, and an ominous portrait of the United States as a deeply disturbed polity emerges.